Bringing up Britain's next generation of scientists, doctors and politicians could be at risk as teachers' morale continues to drop. Let's talk about this with our London correspondent, Laura Smith, on the line now. Hi there, Laura. Um, what's getting them down, then? Well, the, uh, the National Union of Teachers, the uh, biggest teachers union in the UK, has commissioned a survey which says that morale amongst teachers has dropped dramatically. Uh, they talked about the highs and lows of life in the classroom, incredibly low morale, but also frustration at continual criticism and interference from the government, they said. And the figures are quite staggering, actually. 55% um, of teachers surveyed said that morale was either low or very low, and that's up from 42% percent just eight months ago so it's really on a declining trend um, some specific figures 71 percent of the teachers asked said that they rarely or never felt trusted by the government 77 percent said that they didn't feel that specific education policies of the government so specialist schools free schools were taking education in the right direction in this country and just five percent felt that this current coalition government's impact on the education system was positive anything more specific about what what the teachers don't like about the, uh, the government's policies here? Well, there are specifics that they don't like. Um, they, they don't like this continuing interference. They say that every new government that comes in completely revamps the national curriculum and the education system from what it was before, so they're constantly on the back foot trying to get used to new systems. There's a new test now where children aged just five are tested on phonics. Some children obviously fail that test, and teachers are saying that if you fail a test age five, it has a huge impact on your future development, makes you feel like a failure from an incredibly young age. Uh, they're also also trying to change the exam system again, introducing a thing called EBAC, where just a few core subjects would be examined uh, differently from other subjects. And people who are in the arts and sports and all those subjects that you really liked when you were at school um, say that that you know children aren't going to uh, take those subjects anymore. Schools are going to place less emphasis on them. They're fighting against that. And uh, there's also a plan to force uh, schools that are failing to become uh, specialist academies where they concentrate on just one specific subject and teach. Teachers, even teachers who now work in those academies say that that is not a good policy, that the, the, the academy's policy as a whole is not a good one. Laura, how much of this is down to the general malaise affecting Britain during all the cuts, indeed even maybe some New Year blues? Yeah, I, I, the survey was done before New Year, so it's probably not New Year blues. But as far as austerity goes, uh, there certainly is, as you know, teachers talk about how uh, austerity and cuts in general have affected families and the students that they teach. They say that uh, if families ha are poorer, then they, children have less access to technology at home. Uh, they have parents who can't help them necessarily with their schoolwork. And in fact, I talked to Christine Blower, who's the General Secretary of the National Union of Teachers, and she talked about that. Let's hear it. In a general sense, what the government is doing wrong is its whole approach to austerity. Because one of the things that's obvious to teachers is that uh, great swathes of children and their families are having a very difficult time at the moment. And if families lose benefit, uh, in London, for example, that's going to be a huge problem with housing benefit cuts. They'll have to move schools. Uh, and of course, you know, if family income drops drastically, which it has in lots of places, children are coming to school hungry. They haven't had breakfast, they may not go home and get a meal in the evening. So in a general sense, there are really quite big problems. And the upshot of that is that 76% of teachers surveyed said that austerity measures were having a negative impact on families. Laura, British teachers always get nervous about reform, yet they want changes now to improve their situations. What will make the, uh, the difference at minimal cost here, then? Well, cost is, of course, the issue. Um, the, the, the survey asked a specific question about Education Secretary Michael Gove. It turns out that he's one of the most unpopular Education Secretaries the world has ever known. Uh, so a lot of teachers want Michael Gove to resign, they say, although, of course, he thinks he's doing the best thing, rushing through these changes. Um, they want flu fewer and slower reforms, they say. They want to be consulted uh, more because, as I said, every government comes in, it scraps the current policies and it introduces its own new ones, and this government's no different. Teachers find 
find that very frustrating. And they say that they don't feel trusted as professionals. They say that, uh, you know, that, that the government doesn't trust them, that we won't leave them alone to do their jobs. And that, of course, has a huge impact on future generations of children. Uh, and in fact, the National Union of Teachers is not ruling out striking. Unions, of course, never rule out striking. Uh, but uh, Christine Blewett Blew told me specifically that they don't rule it out. Uh, and the government is attacking pay and conditions. And in fact, just before Christmas, Michael Gove, the Education Secretary, was reported in newspapers as having put the Department for Education on a war footing with teachers, which is not going to help going forward. There's an accolade, isn't it? The worst education official the world has ever known. Dear, dear. All right, Laura, thanks ever so much for that.